In this video, we're going to look at manipulating the image to get the desired result from your composition. So instead of removing some areas, like over here, we're going to do something slightly different with the image. I hope you find this useful. We have two images here, one of which is focused on the sand in the foreground and one of which is focused on the lighthouse in the background, so a kind of focus stack. These images were photographed seconds apart using the GF 35 to 70 mil lens. So what we're going to do to bring them together is we are going to get into File, Scripts, Load Files into Stack. And the pop-up window is asking us what the source files are. So if we're just going to click Add Open Files and attempt to automatically align source images. I'm going to check that as well. And then I'm going to click OK. So if I zoom in on these images, you can see the lighthouse there. And we turn it off and you can see that lighthouse is sharper. So this one here, I'm going to move to the top just for reference purposes. And I'm going to change the name of it to Lighthouse. And this one here, I am going to change to Sand. And that's simply for visual reference for me. So if I zoom back out, Control and Zero. Now I'm not going to blend these images together the traditional way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for an area in between the focusing of the foreground image and the background image. And if I flick that on and off, we can see this area here is not too bad at all when it comes to it. So I'm going to control or command and zero and zoom back out. I'm also going to put on the rulers for this. Again, this is just for reference and that's control or command and R. And then if I go onto the ruler, click and drag, I am looking around about this area. It may change once the edit's done, but I'm looking around about this area. What I'm now going to do is scale this up. Now, this is to save me removing this. We know we have the remove tool and the AI remove, but I've also got other elements in here, the slight undulations in the sand that I actually don't want within this image. So what I'm going to do is simply go Control or Command and T, zoom out slightly, and I'm going to scale the image up until most of it disappears. We can deal with that area there, that's okay. And let's just take that back up there. I'm holding down the shift key when I'm doing this, and that's simply to keep it in the same axis. Let's just check I didn't move it. I didn't move it too much. So for me, I am quite happy with how that looks. I may scale it again. I am unsure at the moment. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add a mask to this layer. And we're going to blend the mask. And I'm going to make the foreground color black. I'm going to choose the gradient and ensure that it's on linear. And I'm going to start a bit here and drag up about there, just to about there. And then I'm going to hide everything as in the line here. And to do that, it's just Control and H. And then I'm going to zoom in to see if we have created any artifacts that we don't want. And I'll be honest, at this, that's what well the first time now if i flick this on and off you will see the difference but now we have the sharper layer at the top which is the white house and this layer here which is the sand at the bottom very minimal artifacts or undulations in it the next thing i am going to do is i want a two by one crop in this image so i may have to move things after this as well so i'm going to take the crop tool and i've already got it set at two by one i'm ensuring that delete crop pixels is turned off if you see the tick in there it means it's on I want to keep all the outside information in this in case I have to move things again. And now to move the crop, I am simply going to use the arrows. 
and I'm going to take it up beyond the top of the image so that I know how much room I have to play with. I'm going to take it to about there. I'm going to click OK on this at the moment. So you can see that's what we've been left with and I have lost some of the foreground element that I wanted. Now I've got two options here. What I can do is I can go and grab it and I can move it up to there. And if I hold down shift, it will move in the axis that I want it to move on once I've started. I can do that. And that looks okay to me. I'm quite happy with that at the moment. And now, instead of putting in another linear gradient, if I unlock here and I select the mask and I just move the mask up, can you see that changing? I'll just press it again so that you can see it coming down the way. And the mask is now coming down. Hopefully you can see that it's eaten into this slightly. So I'm going to take that back up. And you can see on the layer that the mask is moving. And now I'm going to click in between the image and the mask itself and turn the link back on. And then I'm going to go into the mask, take a brush, black brush, make sure the hardness is off. Press Command or Control and H and my line comes back in. Although we have moved this, the line is still there as a reference. I'm going to increase the brush size. I'm going to click once here, hold down Shift and click once here. And then I'm going to go back across and back across a couple of times. And for me, I am quite happy with that. The next part of this process is to remove some of these. And again, because we've created the mask, we are going to do it quite simply. And I'm just going to move over here and I'm going to use the brush. This time a white foreground element. And I'm just going to drag in there slightly. And that has lessened. How much is drawn in there? And let's zoom out. Control and zero. And then command or control and H just to hide that. Now you'll notice when I was drawing back in, I've drawn my attention to this area here. So what I'm going to do is make the brush a bit bigger. Turn the opacity down and work. Make sure I'm on a black brush and work back the way. Just ever so slightly. We don't want too much in this. That I am a lot happier with. So what we'll do now is we will crack on with the edit of this image. Because I'm quite happy with it at the moment, what I can do is I can take the crop tool Ensure Delete Cropped Pixels is now ticked. Double click twice in there. So we have now lost all the information outside, which will help us when we go to the next step. Shift, Control, Alt and E combines these two layers into one, so I can turn them off. And this is now one image of our manipulated scene. So the next thing I'm going to do, just to err in the side of caution, is Control and J. To copy a layer up and I'm going to turn off this one as well and then on the top layer which I will color green and then I am going to go into camera raw and edit this image and the first thing we are going to do is we are going to quickly adjust the image so I'm going to bring that back slightly adjust the contrast pull the highlights back just a bit lift the shadows to there just to help with the lighthouse the whites i'm going to bring back and as you can see by the histogram when we're editing i've got plenty of latitude with this I'm okay with that i'm not going to get into anything else we're going to do the rest of the edit using the masks so the first thing i'm going to do is select the landscape to see how it reads the image and it says we have a sky, of course it does, because we have a sky. We have architecture, because we have a lighthouse, and we have natural ground, 
which is the sand. So the sky and a very thin strip of sea is included in one. Create three separate masks. We will start with the sky. Exposure, let's add a tiny bit of contrast to this, just a tiny bit. Highlights, let's bring them down slightly. Shadows, let's leave them there because of what I'm going to do with the sand and the blue. Again, I like the texture in these type of skies. Let's lift the texture and let's lift the clarity. Dehaze won't affect this too much for the style that I am after for this edit. The next thing, I'm going to jump into the natural ground and I'm going to warm the sand up. I'm also going to adjust the hue of it slightly and I have used fine adjustment selected. So I'm just going to take that over slightly. Again, quite happy. Texture, let's add a tiny bit of texture. If you've been following along with these videos, you will notice I do use a lot of texture and clarity but it's in certain images that I do it. Others, I will pull this right back. Perhaps a touch more saturation in there. It's around about there. Still leaving the lighthouse at the moment because I want to edit everything else and then adjust the lighthouse to match the rest of the image. So I'm going to add a linear gradient at the bottom, just in about there. Turn the exposure down slightly, just to help draw your eyes into the image. Perhaps a bit too much over there, so I'm going to lift the shadows. Again, quite happy with the results. A couple of radial gradients. Create radial gradient, and I'm going to put one in here, because the effect of this one will allow me to assess how much I am adding over the rest of the image. So we're going to add a slight exposure in here. Just about there. The next one we are going to do is a radial gradient and just in here because the sun is over here at the time of taking this image. And I'm going to add that just about there. And again, I'm going to add just the exposure in this one. Very slight. And then I'm going to pull back the amount of this. So if I pull that right back to there, you won't see too much of a difference. Let's reset it. Just pull it back slightly. Just in about there. I'm going to jump into the properties panel. Yep. Everything's looking okay there. Perhaps I'll add a slight vignette in here. Or... Go back into the masks. We'll just test this at the moment just to let you see. Radial gradient. And I'm going to take the radial gradient to about there. I'm going to rotate it slightly. Take it up to about there. And I'm going to bring the exposure back. Just ever so slightly there. Not too much at all. And that again. I'll just adjust that slightly. That again will help. Pull your eyes in here and we'll lead you through the entire image. I'm going to add another linear gradient, except this time at the top. And again, I'm going to turn the exposure down slightly to help draw your eyes in. Not too much with this. I'm going to adjust the clarity in here. Just around about there. This I'm happy with. We are nearly complete with this image. Let's jump in to the architecture itself. So we've now edited the surrounding area of the lighthouse. It's time to go in and edit the lighthouse. So with the lighthouse, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lift the shadows. Now we don't want to go too far with this. I'm going to add a tiny bit of contrast, exposure ever so slightly, because I still want to keep it as a part of the image and not make it look as if it's overemphasized within it. Perhaps bring the shadows back slightly, push the contrast. That's bringing us back in. Now I can adjust the highlights just to about there. And that looks really nice at that. 
I again am quite happy so let's add a bit of clarity which will darken it slightly because we are playing with the pixels and just a bit there we're not causing any hailing that I can see and perhaps I'll even jump back in to this mask here lift the shadows in it just to create extra emphasis and let's just see what that looks like I am very happy with that edit. So here we now have the before and the after. And hopefully you will agree that the image stands out a lot more. Perhaps a slight crop at the top with this. We'll just bring that in ever so slightly. Just to around about there. Click OK. And that way we have taken out the clouds at the top. After reviewing the image, I felt it was slightly too dark, so I added a curves layer and then I added another flare here to take up some of the goal. Hopefully you got something from this edit. Thanks again for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next video.